truck stuck in the road Time grabs you by the wrist, directs you where to go So make the best of this test and don't ask why It's not a question but a lesson learned in time It's something unpredictable But in the end is right I hope you had the time of your life So take the photographs and still frames in your mind Hanging on a shelf in good health and good time Tattoos and memories and dead skin on trial For what it's worth, it was worth all the while It's something unpredictable, but in the end is right I hope you had the time of your life Something unpredictable, but in the end it's right I hope you had the time of your life It's something unpredictable, but in the end it's right I hope you had the time of your life Live from Los Angeles, welcome to Good Morning La La Land. I'm Dr. Aaron. I'm Rob Mack. And I'm Jess Moye. This is Good Morning La La Land, America's first live streaming daily talk show, coming to you live Monday through Friday at 9 a.m. on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Twitch, also available on Apple TV and Roku via the EverTalk app. And it's hashtag Friday Feels, you guys. It's all about love today. So the question is, do you love Mondays as much as Fridays? Ah. We're going to talk about it. 53 to 85 percent of people hate the <laughs> so we got to break this stuff on down we come together each day to know the truth live on spiritual principle align with universal law and have a zillion amazing yes today. indeed yeah i remember yes. those days of hating my job thank god yeah. they're over Ooh. yes if you love what you do you never work a day in your life and our very special guests today love what they do good morning everyone back in the studio good morning Hello. Oh, we have a couch full of incredible guests. I'd love for you to take a moment to introduce yourself and tell us how do you start your day? What's your morning routine? Hi, I'm Kitty Sky. I start my day with a quick heart meditation, and then I think of all the things I'm grateful for, and then I make a fresh honor morning smoothie. Awesome. What are you most grateful for today? I'm grateful for the sunshine. I'm grateful for our new friends. Love it. <laughs> and I'm grateful to be here. We're grateful to have you. Thank you. Hey, my name is Ian Guerin, and I start my day drinking a hot cup of coffee so then I can think, and I'm grateful that I get to do what I love for a living. Mm -hmm. I hear you. 
Uh, good morning, I'm Kate from Australia. Uh, my morning starts um, with my three-year-old little girl called Annabelle. Um, I chase her around the house to make sure she's ready for kindy. Um, and then I don't drink hot coffee, but I have a coffee enema every day um, and a big fat green juice. Wow, good for you. She has coffee one way. Yes, <laughs> one way or the other, quite literally. That's amazing. I'm Z. Um, I'm from Los Angeles, representing the Armenian community. I cuddle with my dogs in the morning. I have a Labradoodle and a German Short Hair Pointer, and that's what I do every morning. Just lots of cuddles before work. Mm. Very cool. Um, I cuddle my puppies too, actually, the first thing in the morning. So cuddle my puppies, uh, drink my coffee, write for an hour, work out, then meditate. All right. Hi, I'm Hector from London and I just get up, go downstairs and feed my chameleon and then go around and play with my dogs and then start schoolwork. Oh my awesome. God, so cute. Yes. <laughs> Hello, my name is Thad. I'm from Texas. You can tell by the accent. Uh, we get up very early in the morning and uh, I live on somewhat of a farm. So uh, we start the, uh, the day rolling with work. Fantastic. Love it. Love all the incredible accents today, right? <laughs> yes. Uh, well, thank you all for coming from all over the world to be with us here in La La Land this morning. We look forward to continuing the conversation later in the show. Awesome. I want to come back as a UK, a UK in. I know. I've got children that, that sound like you. Oh my gosh, right? I mean, you can say anything. It sounds amazing. It's so cute. Yeah. Horrible. yeah. There is something that Americans just love about a British accent. Oh my accent, gosh. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So I have kind of a funny story, guys. I, yeah. I'm a little bit embarrassed, but I'm not at the same time. So I get a text from my girlfriend, my psychic girlfriend. She has all these intuitive things. And you know, majority of the time they're right. So she calls me up yesterday and she texts and calls and says, hey, I don't know what the deal is, but I had a total dream about a big earthquake. And so you might just want to pack a bag. I have no idea, just heads up. Okay, I was like, fine. Yeah. So I packed a bag, cause she's, wow. you know, I was like, well, you never know. Yeah. So last night, I can, I can tell what an earthquake's gonna happen cause I can hear there's like this wind that comes in every time. And sure enough, there's a 3.7 yeah. earthquake oh, in, in um, Compton. Compton last night. <laughs> It's at what twelve nineteen at night, and I'm like, holy cow! Like she's yeah. run, I'm like right around the house. Like, yeah. I'm grabbing my yeah. bag. I go out. I call her. I'm like, what? She's like, so I go over to her house. It's like one o'clock in the morning, and we're like laughing. And she's like, well, usually it doesn't happen this fast. When I, usually it's a day to three days. I'm thinking, oh what? boy. So now the you, next three nights. I have, so the point is this: you thought it was out of the way. There is like a new movement in in something, and they've said that there's a possibility of having a, a 8.0. No idea, it might not happen, but please get prepared. It's very important to have water, to have emergency things, have a backpack, and have some kind of an exit strategy or a backup plan of how yeah. you're going to deal with life. Maybe a flight plan <laughs> or itinerary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know. So, you know, it was wow. really bizarre. Oh, absolutely. Well, I did run into a dear friend of ours, Nikki Whalen, last night at the Gen Lux party. We were honoring the launch of their recent issue. Of course, Cynthia Bailey is gracing the cover. I was over at Sir, owned by Lisa Vanderpump, Beautiful. right here in West Hollywood. Gorgeous location. Uh, and it was so fun wearing Dawn Star, of course, yeah. dear friend of ours with that body chain. And Nikki Whalen was there. Nice. She sends Aww. all her love. It was a gorgeous event. So thank you, Gen Lux. And the team for doing this. I look like a ton of fun, Jess. Oh, always. You know me. <laughs> it looks is. so perfect. So today is Friday Feels, all about love. And I'm sure, Rob, you're going to be able to really try to uh -oh. this one. So they say that 83, I'm sorry, 53 to 85% of people hate their job. Yeah. And do you deal with this a lot with your CEO? All day, every day. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. what do you do? How do you, what do you do? In well, you know, the challenge is that most of us in the States, not all of us, but most of us don't spend a whole lot of time thinking about what it is that we truly deeply want to do, but instead just choose jobs based on what we should do or how much money we'll make, you know, doing that job. And so that's part of the problem. The other part of the problem is that folks have um, very short attention spans. So it's very difficult to enjoy anything if you're not present there mentally and emotionally and physically to actually enjoy it if your mind is off somewhere else. Yeah. So you've got those two problems. And then you've got lots of other problems in terms of management. Um, you know, I think part of the sort of challenge and opportunity that I think we all are helping people with particularly managers and senior executives is sort of how to connect with the sort of millennials in a much more uh, sort of deeper, authentic way and in a way that uh, lets them sort of um, shine, I guess. I 
technology. So, so yeah, there are lots of challenges these days. It makes me sad because knowing the truth of who we are, which is creative, divine, spiritual beings, and we're here to create, create, create. That's all yeah. we do. And like, I just think, oh, if you don't love, I mean, I love Fridays and I love Mondays just as much, if not more. My whole life, I work a lot of weekends, so it's always goes a Friday. But, um, but I do think it's so sad if someone doesn't like love. Well, yeah, life. it's such a big part of their life. Totally. I mean, think about it. You probably spend, you know, 60, 70 percent of your life working. You know, a, a large part of it's sleeping, so, you know, it's what's yeah. left, you know, if you're... <laughs> That's why a lot of people drink. <laughs> exactly. So that's also why we have an addiction. The addiction's the way we do in the States. So the point is, is, if you don't love your Mondays just as much as your Fridays, I would deeply take, I would invite you to take this weekend to really think about what you're doing with your life and whether that's going back to school, whether that's getting a coach to start your business that you've always wanted to start, whether that's starting a new career. Really ask yourself, what is it that you need to either be happy in the environment that you're in, creating what you want in that environment, or looking at what really needs to happen to make the quantum leap. Absolutely. Else. If you're not pursuing your dream, what are you doing, right? Oh, you do a great job with that, Jess. Yeah. I feel like every day for you is a Friday. It is, <laughs> yeah, Right? I love what I do so much in the community I've created for myself, and I've really worked hard to build this life for myself. I didn't wait for it to be given to me or for some door to open. I'm actively making it happen for myself. Yes, That's you cool. are. I love yes, it. You are. Well, let's uh, take a break. We come back. We're going to talk to our guests and find out how they made their lives happen. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Where can you watch the stories of people changing the world? EverTalk TV, the Netflix of talk. I'm Jess Moyer, the co-founder and host of EverTalk TV, and I am thrilled to introduce you to America's first live video streaming talk show network. <laughs> I'm so excited to be here on the couch with all you amazing people. Yeah. I'm just in complete awe. Thank you. It's happy to be here. And for those who don't know, because there is this is a big old there's a lot going on here. <laughs> a lot you going do this on every here. day. Why? God Why bless you guys. Are? I mean, there's a lot going on. Thank you for having me. This is an awesome studio. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited. <laughs> You I feel that, actually. Yes. I feel that. How exciting. Motivation Monday. You know? And the guests this morning have been incredible. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here with you. And we have Rachel Boston, who is in The Last Bridesmaid on Hallmark. It actually is dropping tomorrow, the 22nd, right? It is. Tomorrow night's our premiere. Woo! Wow. Congratulations! I am so excited to welcome Jason and Ashley Waller to the show. Congratulations on the new beginnings. We're so excited for the premiere on MTV tonight. Thank you guys. You we guys. appreciate it. Thank so. you. The book is actually being shipped out today. It published this what? week. Oh, congratulations. congratulations! You guys are Super the first cool. show oh, that awesome. I've actually done on uh, talking about the book. I think this is my first time my book's been up on TV. This is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> our friends at Universal Pictures have a special delivery for us this morning from a tethered himself. Ooh. Have you seen the film Us by oh Academy Award winner Jordan Peele? You know, I'm sitting here next to you guys and it's just like, this is a powerful moment for me. Like, you know, I'm, I'm humbled by it because it's like, I'm sharing this movie with you guys and, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's moving for me. Mm. What are you most grateful for today? I am so grateful to be here and to have the opportunity to be with all these wonderful, badass boss babes <laughs> um, and with all of you. And it's just a wonderful opportunity to share the positive messages out in the world because I think the world really needs it Amazing. right now. What we've done and thanking me for the contribution we're making to their lives. Oh, and I nice. Thought, mm. That's this great. is what my purpose is. This is why I was born. Now Let's show it the camera. Up to you to choose the winner. Is it Annie? Is it Haley? That's why I like this show. You know, years ago I did the Dinah show, which is Dinah Shore, and it was a daytime show. And it was kind of like this. And it was just like very up and it was all positive stuff. They didn't bring uh, negative stuff to, to the audience. And that's why I feel with this show. It's very relaxed. You know, it's very professional, but it's quite a bit of fun. You can binge watch and binge watch. You binge watch. And you can binge watch. Binge watch or you can binge watch. Please binge watch. You can binge watch and binge them on EverTalk TV. Thanks for coming. Bye. Yes. First TV experience. I'm so happy Yay. I did it with you.
empower you anytime, anywhere on EverTalk TV, your home for talk. Live from Los Angeles, welcome back to Good Morning Law, and we are so excited to welcome the winner of the Micro Roaster of the Year Award, <laughs> the founders of Moster Coffee. Thank you yes. so much for being with us today. Absolutely. So what's the story behind the name, Moster? So Moster means show and performance in Italian, and so Bev and I are best friends, and we started the company, and I actually lived in L.A. for about... I don't know, maybe 11 or 12 years doing um, TV and film and TV hosting, actually. Um, and then she's a professional opera singer. So we actually took our performance backgrounds and we um, were inspired by that. And that's how we came up with the name. A performance background, I'm yes. sure, fueled by caffeine. Right? Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. And the exactly. need for a good cup of coffee in right. Southern California. Yes. So tell us specifically a little bit about the roast and the business that you've created. Do you want to start with that, Bev? Or do you? The roast and the business, yeah, how we started it. Yeah. So we actually, um, she and I did a lot of work in the Filipino community mm -hmm. um, back in 2009, and we took a trip to the Philippines, went there, saw a lot of um, just opportunity as far as social enterprise, mm -hmm. and then came back and was really trying to figure out a way to give more opportunity back in the Philippines. So we're all first generation Filipino American. Mm -hmm. Our families are from there. And so we really wanted to honor our family um, because of their sacrifice it was coming to America and giving us yeah. the opportunity yeah. to achieve the American dream, which is most our coffee. So, so another thing is that we, we actually started a, um, a pastry company and we don't bake at all. <laughs> okay, so well, we started a pastry Remember, company, performers. but we're performers. <laughs> but our friend was like, "I'm a pastry chef," and like whatever. So we had this opportunity to do that. And we, if you're gonna have pastries, you need coffee, right? I mean, you yeah. don't, you gotta like do that pairing. So we had that opportunity, and then we didn't know anything about coffee because we were tea drinkers, actually. But um, Mike here's a fine dining chef, and he was super into coffee. Like, I saw all of his, like, social media was, like, <laughs> coffee, coffee, coffee. So we were like, okay, Mike, can you maybe show us around, like, some coffee roasters? So he took us around, and that's actually when we had opened our eyes to what specialty coffee was because all we knew was, like, Starbucks yeah. and stuff like that. So anyway, we um, started learning about uh, roasting coffee, and then we were like, hold on a minute. When we were doing charity work out in the Philippines, we had remembered that they grew coffee and they had told us if you guys can help create a demand for a product in the Philippines um, and that would you know draw money into the country and then create more jobs for people and so that was the whole thing behind Moster is we wanted to help try and find ways to eradicate poverty in this beautiful but yet third world country. Donna, so on for, we're talking a little bit about loving your you know career that a lot of people don't like fry i mean don't like mondays in fact they, they hate Mondays. or tuesday yeah. wednesday thursday yeah. <laughs> or friday Coffee, i mean first of all is makes our day all of our days much yeah. better but where was the point for you guys was there ever a point for you guys where before you started this company where you didn't like mondays for us act i mean i was in la acting and doing you know i was filming and auditioning so it's like every day was kind of like you know, it didn't really matter. Like, yeah. we, like you'd go out on Monday to Thursday, and you would not go out on Friday and Saturday. That's when everyone else was going out. So for me, like, it didn't exist. And then owning a business, you work seven days a week. So Monday doesn't exist. Totally. So today's Friday, and we drove from San Diego in traffic. It's like, it doesn't matter. Like, every day is a work day. We have kids, yeah. too. And we're constantly having to juggle kids and work and luckily we love what we do so much because it ties back to the Philippines and helping people cre you know create jobs and improve their livelihoods I think it drives us every single day to like continue to do this because we know that we're actually changing lives I mean we've been able to buy coffee from farms where we like where they were getting like pennies per pound for coffee and how much did we pay them per pound like Close to five dollars a pound or something. Yeah, Amazing. Five, six dollars. And then they were sending their families to like college. So, Mike, I'm really wondering though, what makes this product unique? The specialty coffee, because that, of course, mm -hmm. is your specialty. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, specialty coffee. I mean, it starts at the farm. Um, it's responsible. They get what they're what they're due, not the nickel and diming. But uh, the goal for us at Mosha is to really empower uh, the farmers and really uh, provide. Uh, something that's sustainable for them in the long run. You know, if we're if we're paying them pennies, that that is not sustainable for them mm -hmm. to have a have a life or for their family's livelihood. So it's not. Well, um, tell people where they can find your coffee. How can they get it? So you can actually go to our website, mostercoffee.com. We actually just launched our subscription program, which is exciting because with this award, this is an international award. We thought it was North America. Yeah. 
But we found out yesterday when we got the award that it's international. So we've actually started getting like a ton of orders from across the country. Um, but And so we've launched a subscription program. So you can actually get coffee sent to your door automatically. Um, just visit our website. You'll see the link right there. Um, we actually have this, we've featured this beer. We do this um, collaboration with Stone Brewing every single year. It's a nationally distributed beer called Stone Chocovesa. And um, so if you like stouts, coffee stouts, you can go to different um, liquor stores, BevMo, and you can pick. Love it. You can turn up and turn down at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's literally up person <laughs> downers. Yeah. Up person yeah. downers. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. We'll bring it back. We do Can you watch the stories of people changing the world? Ever Talk TV, the Netflix of talk. I'm Jez Moyer, the co-founder and host of Ever Talk TV, and I am thrilled to introduce you to America's first live video streaming talk show network. We all crave connection. I, I'm a big fan of videoing a podcast. The impact that I'm having people on a podcast wow. is I'm having more impact on, on those people than I ever did in news. We want to be heard, but we also need to listen. Podcasts, I understand they are red hot. It's actually remarkable how scary to me podcasting is. Everybody should have a podcast. I really wondered why. I mean, we've been doing this for 12 years. Nobody has done this uh, right. in other arenas. We have to change the conversation to happiness over financial success. It was like, we have to. We have to. Honestly, it was meeting new people who had already heard about what we've done and thanking me for the contribution we're making to their lives. Oh, nice. Mm. That's this great. is what my purpose is. This is why I was born. Yeah. I think this is my first time my book's been up on TV. This is awesome. <laughs> you can binge watch. And binge watch. You can binge watch. And you can binge watch. Binge watch. Or you can binge watch. Please binge watch. You can binge watch. And binge them on EverTalk TV. Thanks for coming. Bye. Entertainment that will inspire, uplift, and empower you anytime, anywhere on EverTalk TV, your home for talk. Live from Los Angeles, welcome back to Good Morning La Land. On Friday, it's all about Friday feels and loving your life. And this woman right here, I gotta say, Hashtag goals, Lisa Bellew is in the house. She is the co-founder of, we were co-founder of Quest. You've done Impact Theory, Women of Impact. I mean, you've ran and been involved with a billion dollar company. I mean, you are hashtag goals, no joking. Thank you, girl, appreciate I'm so it. Happy you're here. So happy to be here. So um, a couple of things. One, I have a really funny story about Ooh. when I first met you. Okay. okay. We were up, we have all these amazing influencers in LA and we're at this influencer event with a bunch of women. And I sat next to you, we, we got on this long table and somehow we paired up and we sat and I was in my second day in on a keto diet and I was a disaster. I was so low energy. That's I was like, right. and I was having a hard time even talking and I remember thinking she must think I'm just a ditz because I don't think I barely even said anything, you know, but you have been such an inspiration because I follow your, your journey and you're all about health and all this stuff. So I want to know how your journey in health has led you to what you're up to today. Yeah, um, the truth is, is that I had, I had no intention of ever talking about my personal life. I was always behind the scenes when we built Quest and Impact Theory. Um, and then I just, I've had a lot of health issues over the last four years um, with my digestion. And I started talking about it just as a like, as a release. Um, and then I started to get people that um, could, it could resonate with them. And so the more I was talking about it, the more people were reaching out saying that they also suffer from the same digestive issues. And really it's um, not, I don't feel sorry for myself, but it's how do I deal every single day with the condition that I have and not let it run my life. And so in talking out about that, a lot of people it's resonated and. Mm -hmm. Ask well, me. you've even taken your message to the stages of TED Talk. Let's take a look. So I reminded myself of what I was able to achieve, that I could change my perspective at any choice, at any time, that our perspective is a choice, 
And that's when I then took the next leap and I built my very first cooking show with Cassie Ho. I then went on to build the state-of-the-art set for Inside Quest. I then was co-founder with my husband of Impact Theory Media Studios. I'm now host and founder of Women of Impact. And all of these shows, accumulatively over these last few years, have surpassed 300 million views. Mm. So Easy. Aaron's right. Hashtag yes. gold. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Women of Impact, you've had some incredible people, some similar people we've had here, Alexi Panos, mm -hmm. um, Natalie Ellis, um, CEO of Boss Babe. Who, what has been the, the greatest like message out of interviewing some of these women of impact? Oh, that's like asking <laughs> to choose your favorite child or your yes. favorite dog. I can't choose my or favorite, favorite organ. dog. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like that one. I feel that. Um, so it's really hard to choose. And I know that sounds like a cop out, but every single woman that I bring on, um, how I decide on who comes on the show is what do I have to learn from them? Because if I'm going to spend five, six hours researching the person, which is what I do every time I have a guest on, is that it has to help me grow as well. And then I'm able to use that in my company or my personal life. So every guest is very different and they have different messages. Um, but I've had a couple of guests on um, who are living the life that I so want to live. So that's always super exciting to kind of, um, I want to be in the media studio space. Um, our plan is to build um, a studio bigger than Disney. So um, we've had a couple of people in the film industry come on that just from a personal standpoint I'm super, I was super excited. Bigger, though, right? <laughs> I know, I know. It's going to take about 50 years though. I don't expect it to be overnight. Let's uh... Lisa, I'm very curious though, as a child, what was your dream? What was your plan A? What were you aspiring to be? Um, so I actually always wanted to be um, the first woman to win an Academy Award in film directing. Mm. Now, Catherine Bigelow beat me to it, but that was always an, an inspiration of mine. Um, and then what happened was I got married. I was brought up very traditional Greek. So when I got married, I actually slipped into a housewife role, even though I had massive dreams. And it, it somehow felt natural to me, even though I don't, like looking back now, I didn't really want it. Um, the plan was I was only gonna do that for a year. Me and my husband had a plan. We were gonna make enough money to make movies. And then eight years later, I found myself still a stay-at-home wife. And look, there's nothing wrong with that at all no. if you choose it. But looking back now, I don't think I chose it. I slipped into that role mm -hmm. and then spent eight years numb to the fact that I was doing it. Mm -hmm. So um, <clears throat> when Quest Nutrition came along and then Impact Theory, I started to really assess, like, okay, this is um, an opportunity for me to really express myself and do what I love doing. Mm -hmm. And so that's how I ended What was the most challenging part of that pivot? You know, because when you're spending eight years doing something that you sort of slipped into and didn't necessarily choose, and you want to ramp up in terms of a business, I mean, what did you have to learn or do that was hard? Yeah, it was all very accidental. Yeah. So my husband comes home one day, hey, we want to start this new business. I'm thinking I'm going to be the best wife ever and I'm yeah. going to support my husband. Oh. Yeah. So he's like, you just need to ship a couple of protein bars from our living room floor, no big deal. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we, we just need to rent a kitchen if you don't mind weighing the ingredients because him and his business partners had a day job. And so because I didn't have a quote unquote day job, I was weighing peanut butter at home and, um, and the wives were all doing the same. And so I was shipping a couple of bars from my living room floor, not realizing we would grow at 57,000% and go from zero to a billion dollars in three years. Three years. Yeah. Incredible. Um, and because our house was on the line, every day it was like, oh, I'm shipping from the living room floor. Oh, we, I'm just going to ship from a garage. Oh, I just need to ship from an office. <laughs> and so everyone just, well, Lisa, you know how to do it. Like, just figure it out. And I didn't want to lose my house. And I wanted to be the best wife ever and support my husband. So I'm like, I'm going to figure it out. And I stumbled, I failed, I was, you know, moments where I was like completely inadequate to take on the role. But when you don't, you feel like you don't have a choice, it pushes you to do extraordinary things. And so for me, it was like, just learn, just learn. And so I, because I kept repeating that in my head, it taught me, I figured out freight delivery, UPS, like shipping, internationals, forklifts. And so I was able to take that department from zero to the billion dollars. So, that is incredible. So the, one of the points you put there is that basically you were demanded to rise to the occasion. Correct. So, and I know that you guys are in 
lots of big masterminds, lots of the coaching world. It, is that what people do? Is it they put it they put some kind of a commitment way out there that demands them to get big, or do you how do you scale? Yeah, well, so back then it was very different. I didn't have what we now call the growth mindset. Um, I didn't think of myself as an entrepreneur. So it really was like an evolution from 2010 when we started Quest to today, where I was extremely insecure. I would never be on camera um, to being able to really assess, okay, where did I go wrong? What did we do wrong in Quest? How can I use those skill sets to develop in impact theory? And then always th see it as an evolution. So it's kind of my process has changed over these last nine years. And now we set the goal of, okay, we're gonna be bigger than Disney, but that's a 50 year plan. How do you do that on a yearly basis, on a monthly basis? What do I do every day that is moving me towards that goal? Right. You made three billion in one year, or, or one billion in three years. I think it's not gonna take you less, <laughs> so much less than 50 years. And it's hashtag relationship goals also. You and Tom, your husband. Mm -hmm. I mean, both you guys are just epic human beings. Um, watch them all, I mean, all over the place on Impact. They're interviewing some of the top of the top influencers and new thought leaders in the world. And so how do you manage that being, I mean, you guys are, I mean, you guys are hashtag power couple. Like, honestly, I look at them like, they are amazing. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's about having rules to live by. So we sit down and when we first started Impact Theory, it was like, okay, well, you can't have two CEOs because at some point there's gonna be a decision that needs to be made and we're not gonna agree. Now, if we can say our goal is for the company to succeed, our, company, uh, our goal is for our company to get to X, Y, and Z, in order for us to do that, you have to keep momentum going. So if me and him disagree and we butt head, who's going to have the final say? And we decided that when we weren't emotional, because deciding that in mm. the moment where you're going back uh, and forth yeah. is a disaster. Impossible. So we sat down and we call it emotional sober moments. And so we sat down and we wrote out all our rules of engagement. And in those moments, it's like, okay, if we come to a head, we're gonna respect each other. We're gonna go back and forth and try and persuade each other. But if we don't, if we're not able to move forward, he decides the decision. And we've been uh, impact theory now for three years and only about two months ago, the first time that happened. Because usually we're very respectful and we kind of like, okay, let's just go with your idea. But a few months ago, we came to a head and we're in a big meeting with our entire team and everyone's sitting around and we're debating and we're just, we're, we're not making any progress. And he's like, I hear what you're saying, but we're moving forward with this. And in that moment, I'm like, oh my God, that stings. And I'm like, Lisa, remember, you agreed to this. You agreed to this. I was like, cool. I disagree, but I'm on board. And that's another thing. Like we have language around things because you have to be on board with the decisions that are getting made in your business. So we say, I agree. Or I disagree, but I'm on board, and then we move forward. Oh, I love that. Like I said, hashtag. <laughs> <laughs> How can people find your personal journey and watch both the shows? Yeah, please. So follow me at Lisa Billu, um, and I host a show called At Women of Impact or Women of Impact on YouTube. So go check that out. Um, and then the company is Impact Theory. Amazing. Oh, thank you so much, Lisa, for your time. Thank you guys for having me. Stay tuned. We'll be back tomorrow. And good morning, Lala. Watch the stories of people changing the world. Ever Talk TV the Netflix of talk. Tell me why I'm if you could describe the legacy you want to leave behind in a couple of words, what would it be? You know, the, the person who made a massive dent in the world of loneliness. You know, it's the number one health epidemic that we're facing in the world today. It's the number one predictor of our mortality. It's more likely to kill you than smoking, heart disease, traffic, the flu, sitting, and if I can make a dent in the world of loneliness, then that, that to me is, is everything. Aww, I love your message and I love your story. And for you guys out there, go download Hey Vina. It's really, really remarkable. I downloaded it. They ask questions that actually help target who you're looking for and who you're looking to network with and become friends with. Thank you. If you like this, please share it, please comment it, and thank you again for being here. Thank you for having me. EverTalk is hashtag community powered, so we are excited to offer you a free 30-day subscription to explore the talk shows that will bring you timeless entertainment and evergreen conversations that will inspire, uplift, and empower you anytime, anywhere at EverTalk TV.
Live from Los Angeles, welcome back to Good Morning La, La Land on Hashtag Friday Feels. It's all about creating a life you love, and he has started from a very young age. We're welcoming Hector all the way from London to the show. Thank you for being with us in La La Land. Thank you. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about your project, Four Weddings and a Funeral. Yes, so Four Weddings and a Funeral is a new TV series about Maya, who is played by Nassie Manuel, who gets a wedding invitation from one of her friends in London. So she flies over and it's the story is mainly about all the trials and tribulations they face with their friendship and relationships. And, and tell us about your character in particular. So Giles, who is the son of Gemma, who's one of the main gang of friends, is quite a kind of quirky, you could say nerdy, smart, fun little kid. Yeah, yeah. He's very fun to play. I know you're working with Minnie Kelly as well. Yes. Did you learn anything from her? Well, she gave me some quite good advice that helped me trust my instincts very well. Mm. It was, so whenever I was to walk over to her and say, how do you think Giles would do this? She would say, well, how do you think Giles would do it? Mm. And that really helped me understand my character more. So whenever I get a new role, I really know how to approach it and how to really be him. Yeah. I love it. You get straight A's in school, school, don't you? I just feel like you're a straight A student, like so well-spoken, so well-mannered. So when did you decide I want to be an actor. Quite, quite a long time ago. I, when, I was watching the add-ons from Star Wars, because I love Star <laughs> Wars, <laughs> and I thought, I really want to be an actor when I grow up. So I went in, I went in to see my mum, and I said, can I be an actor when I grow up? And she actually said, you could be one now if you like, much wow. to my surprise. And I said, can I be one? And she just said yes. And that wow. was the start of it. So what do you love most about being an actor? I think... What's really amazing is that you get to be a whole new person for a day. Like, say, there could be a dragon, which there wouldn't normally be in real <laughs> life. You can just <laughs> be different things and see different things. So what do you think is next for you on your journey as an actor? Well, I've just finished working with a very talented Damien Lewis. He had an immense focus, and it was very good watching him to help me under. Mm. Well, help me be better with my acting. Wow. But, yeah, we're excited for that coming out later in the year. Now, is this your first time in America? It is, yes. Oh, really? What, what do, do you, you think? think? <laughs> I love it. I mean, you have beaches and palm trees and nice sunny weather and mountains, and we have rain. <laughs> <laughs> you have yeah. accents. Your accent is so beautiful. And great Thanks. clothes, by the way, as well. Great. I have Thanks. to say. Sharp blazer yes. there. And, and teddy bears. Tell us about what you have. Who's so who's this about. is Mito Bear, who's a little bear dedicated to a girl called Amber Bailey, who dies later in the year. She was just pretty much the same age as me, also homeschooled. And she died of mitochondrial disease, and she really wanted to travel and see the world and see Frozen too. Mm. But sadly, passed before she could do that. So her mum made this little bear for people to take around the world, and I'm going to take him to Disneyland to meet, well, hopefully meet Fro Frozen's Elsa and Anna, because Aww. that's something she wanted to do. This is the sweetest thing. Can we adopt you? I know. <laughs> We're going to adopt him as part. A part of a good morning. Thank, Thank you so much for being with Thank us you. today. I hope you enjoy lovely. America. I All will. of the best of La La Land. Have yes. a beautiful time in Disneyland. I will. Thank you. <laughs> so Stay nice. tuned. Back for more on Good Morning La La Land. Where can you watch the stories of people changing the world? Ever Talk TV, the Netflix of talk. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Today we have life master Tony Lanny. Oh, today we have a very special guest, Alon Torres. Today we have a very special guest, Mark Harari on the show. And he is, you You have really, really inspired me because you really, you walk the walk, you talk the talk. It's never too late, no matter what your age. It doesn't matter if you're young, it doesn't matter if you're older. You know, over the last 10 plus years, 12 years, it's been this journey where as I was continuing to help others, I was helping myself. Mm -hmm. You know, as I went deeper, I was able to bring people deeper. But you've got to put it aside. You've got to right, put it aside. Right, that's one of his tips is leave the oh, at uh -huh. the door. Drop it at the door. But we can't give you too many more uh, little tips because we're going to give away the whole thing. <laughs> but there is a yeah. video if you click below. I'm Life Master Tony Lanny. Yay! See how easy that was? Wow. <laughs> EverTalk is hashtag community powered, so we are excited to offer you a free 30-day subscription to explore the talk shows that will bring you timeless entertainment and evergreen conversations that will inspire, uplift, and empower you anytime, anywhere at EverTalk TV.
Live from Los Angeles, welcome back to Good Morning, Lala. On Friday, it's all about loving life. And we have Kate Malvinen in the house. You're a cancer survivor. Sure am. You are a business, or you run a business all about home goods and stuff. Yep. So we want to hear your personal journey to really finding the love in your life. Yeah, okay. So um, I suppose the nitty gritty is that a year ago, exactly a year ago, I was diagnosed with um, cancer, lung cancer. I'm a non-smoker. Um, so that was a surprise. Lung cancer, um, it's gone into my liver, lymph nodes, hip, ribs, spine, spine shoulders. Um, I was given as little as six months to live. Um, two years prior, I'd lost my husband to an, an ice addiction. Um, I actually call it ice. Street name is, is methamphetamine. Mm -hmm. um, and I say lost, he's, he's, he's somewhere in the world. I don't know where he's on the streets using intravenously. So my heart was broken. Uh, they do so that you hold your grief in your lungs. So I was 39, going to the gym five times a week, um, told you have lung cancer. Um, I've got a beautiful little girl, um, she was two at the time, called Annabelle. Um, so, <sighs> right there and then, I was, I was told you don't have long to live. I, I had to find strength from somewhere and I, and I found it in her. So, um, the doctor said, look, you, you know, you might, you might only have 12 months. They put me on a targeted therapy drug and they said, well, we could probably get you to 18 to 24 months. My little girl would only be four at that time. So, I was very, very fortunate. I, um, I bumped into a friend and he said, Kate, there are other ways. There's a clinic in Mexico, it's called Hope for Cancer. The next day I bumped into someone else and they said, you know what, there's a clinic in Mexico and it's called Hope for Cancer. Well, I was given no hope at all from the Australian medical industry, at all. Um, I was told, you're gonna die. I said, operate on my lung, take it out, we can't do that. Um, you know, chemotherapy, we're, we're not gonna do that. So, um, right there and then I became um, a power force and I said, I'm, I became a mother tiger, you know, I was looking after yeah. my cub. Um, she hasn't, Annabelle doesn't have a dad because he's a drug addict um, and by, she has to have a mum. You know, the most important thing in the world is that she has a mummy around. So I jumped on a plane um, and I went to, it's going to get me emotional now because um, it's, it's just, just such an amazing story. I went to a clinic in, um, in Cancun in Mexico and within three weeks we'd got 50% of the cancer gone. Wow. Um, wow. I've been back since. I'm actually en route to Mexico now, hence why I'm in LA. Um, and I'm now 90% cancer free. So how? What happened? Um, a lot of non-toxic therapies, um, a lot of heat therapy. Um, they bring your body to um, fever point to start killing those cancer cells. Mm -hmm. A lot of IVs, so vitamin C, curcumin, um, B17, all natural products that go in. And what about releasing the grief? Oh, I mean, that's... the emotion you've been Absolutely, hearing. that's a huge thing. And I think that's something that we don't realise. We think cancer is physical. Well, for me, it was most definitely emotional. Um, so I've had a grief counsellor for two years. Um, a lot of heart opening, a lot of forgiveness. You have to do that to move forwards. Of course, there was a lot of anger, grief, upset, depression. I mean, I was, I was depressed. I was ready to put a bullet through my brain. I literally was. When you saw the progress and you saw it happening that quickly, were you shocked and were you in denial at all about it? Or did you just know that it was going to be... Um, success and successful experience for you? I, at the start, I didn't know. Now I know. Now I know I'm going to survive. Um, I still have cancer. The doctors in Australia would still say that um, because I was stage four, I'm still terminal. But that's, that's no chance. I've never felt better. I've never felt healthier. I've never felt happier. Um, I eat organically. Right. Um, and we vegan. Know, we know that now there's been uh, you know, a study of 3,500 uh, cancer, you know, spontaneous remission, basically. Which So we know now that there is the possibility. And as a doctor of divinity, we really teach the power of mind. And I truly believe that it's all disease begins in mind. It begins in even the choices that we're making as a culture to create toxins in our in our culture. Absolutely. So, so what's your biggest takeaway now? For somebody, for, you know, I believe that we, we never go through something. At some level, we've chosen at some core, core spiritual level because we know we want to experience that to make a difference in the world. What do you, I mean, you're here today because yeah. you're a voice yeah. for this, right? So yeah. what is your, what's your message around all that? Um, the message is just to, 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 to be connected to your thought process, to be connected to your, to your mind and understand that, you know, stress, anxiety, grief will, will bring on disease. Mm -hmm. um, um, I, I, I'm a massive advocate now for um, independent alternate therapies. I think they really do work. Um, I'm a massive advocate that we, we mustn't hand over the power to somebody else. So when I walked into that hospital and those, the three, three spe four specialists, a GP, do you call that an MD? Um, radiologist, lung specialist, oncologist, they said, you know, that, that there's nothing that can be done. And, and most of us would take that. I mean, I'm English, so we, we go to a doctor in a white coat that, you, because, we, because we're sick and we look up to them and we respect them. Um, but if I hadn't gone on the path that I had, I probably wouldn't be here right now. 
So um, um, you, you've got to listen to your intuition, listen to your gut, take some risks. Yeah. Please tell everyone how they can continue to follow you, support you. On yeah, your I have a beautiful um, Instagram um, page. It's called It's Not Kate's Time. It's underscore not underscore Kate's underscore time. Um, the support from Australia, the support from worldwide has been huge. Um, I don't think I would be this far emotionally down the track um, if it hadn't been for the support of, of everyone behind Thank us, you. the encouragement. Well, just knowing that, look, there's a time and a place for traditional medicine, alternative medicine, it's important to think for yourself and make your own choices. Um, we know that we cannot say there's a cure other than the medical world legally. So really honoring whoever's path, wherever you are at. Yeah, Thank absolutely. you so much for sharing Thank your you. story. Thank we'll you. be right back. Thank, Thank you. you. The Netflix of talk. Today I'm officially coming out of the closet as a mother. I've never publicly announced it. I've been a model for 15 years and now I'm finally letting people know I have two kids. I have a 16 year old son and my 13 year old son will be 14 in a, another month and a half. You know, obviously explaining that I have a 16 year old, people are gonna be like, wait, how old are you? <laughs> and I'm, I'm, I'm under 40, I'm, at, I'm 36. Okay, let's just get that out there. That's oh wow. Coming right. out of the closet again. You came out twice already yeah. today. I know, <laughs> oh my gosh. I hope that our viewers are watching this to realize that when you have a passion, and when it pays the bills and you can live a good life and provide for your children, there should be no shame in what you do. Right. I Evertalk is hashtag community powered. So we are excited to offer you a free 30 day subscription to explore the talk shows that will bring you timeless entertainment and evergreen conversations that will inspire, uplift and empower you anytime, anywhere at Evertalk TV. Live from Los Angeles, welcome back to Good Morning La Land. We're here with Ian Guerin, an award-winning singer-songwriter celebrating the launch of his new album, Irreplaceable. Thanks so much for being with us. Thank you so much for having so me. So tell us a little bit about why it is irreplaceable and your journey to becoming that for yourself. Well, the title track of the album is a letter to all of the girls that are mentioned in the albums throughout the stories. And most importantly, the things that they taught me through those experiences of self-search, you know, through those relationships are irreplaceable because they made me who I am. Mm. So that's why I wanted the album to be called Irreplaceable. I wanted it to be strong because it made me a stronger man. Yeah. Fantastic. So what kinds of things have they taught you? They taught me to love myself, to believe in myself, to be who I am, because you can't be loved if you're not who I am. And I was trying to be someone that they could love instead of just being me and having them love me for me. So they particularly told me to not be afraid of showing myself as I am. Because oh, I was very scared of that. What were you scared of? Rejection. But that got me more rejection. So as I introspected through the creative process, I learned that, you know, if I reject myself and don't accept the fact that you know, I'm a certain way, then no one can do that. So true. We teach that in universal law, that life is the mirror. It's really the mental equivalent of whatever's going on. And we just have this identity. And whatever the identity, if it's somebody who we need to be rejected, we will make sure that that reflects back through universal law. So, so now what? How did you make the shift to say, you know what? I am, I am love. I am that. Well, I had a very hard episode with OCD. And then I figured, well, if I go out of this, then I'm going to come out of this a better person. And I did. And so I, there was a turning point there where I was just so exhausted of just thinking everything through so harshly. I just couldn't take it anymore. I just wanted to free myself and be myself and do the music that I wanted to do. Everyone told me, why are you doing R&B? Uh, you should do a more commercial thing. And I just wanted to be me. And everyone was you know, adding their own ideas to myself, and I had picked them up for so many years that I was just exhausted. I felt like, you know, like in meditation when they say that you got all this baggage and rocky bundles in your back. Yeah. I felt like that. And finally, when I started making this album, I just said, okay, I'm just going to do what I want to do. I'm not going to fit into any trend. I know that. 
but I'm going to try to set the trend for myself and I'm going to try to do something special. So how would you describe your vibe? We know you're an R&B artist, but what would you liken it to? I think I'm very old fashioned. I think of myself like inside my heart, I'm Tony Bennett. Yeah. <laughs> you know how Michael Jackson said yeah. he was Peter Pan? Yeah. I'm Tony Bennett in my mind all the time, you know, with a jacket and tie, you know. And so I, I think that I'm, I'm like that. I'm very old fashioned when it comes to romance. I'm very old fashioned when it comes to how I dress. Well, this is. Something that yeah, I'm trying, some, something I'm trying for the new run, you know. <laughs> but, but I'm generally like very classic in everything that I do. I like to, you know, pull the chair and open the door for the girl that I'm with, you know. So that's like how my life runs. And I listen to Gene Kelly when I wake up in the morning and have my morning coffee. Like good morning, good morning. <laughs> yeah. So, so that's a great way to start the day. We love that. Well, please tell everyone where they can find and follow you, and of course, get irreplaceable. Well, they can all follow me. I'm right here, right? Uh, they can all follow me on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook as I, at Iamine Guerin. And they can all get Irreplaceable on every streaming service. Ian Guerin is G-U-E-R-I-N. And so they can pick it up or they can just stream it in any platform that they want. Social media, Iamine Guerin. Okay. Awesome. Congratulations. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Good morning, Lala Watch the stories of people changing the world. Ever Talk TV, the Netflix of talk. All I can say to you guys is remember you are not alone. It's that simple. Just keep remembering you are not alone. Evertalk is hashtag community powered, so we are excited to offer you a free 30-day subscription to explore the talk shows that will bring you timeless entertainment and evergreen conversations that will inspire, uplift, and empower you anytime, anywhere at Evertalk TV. Live from Los Angeles, welcome back to Good Morning Lawland. I love a little fashion on Fridays. We've got Zeho back in the house. She's the co-founder of La Nouche, and she is keeping our little ladies very well styled. Thanks so much for being here. Thank you for having me. First of all, I'm going to get baby fever. My mom's watching, and she's going <laughs> to say, we're going to just need to have this on standby for someday when I have a little girl. Tell us about this line. Um, so the philosophy behind our brand is empathy. So before we design, before we start any idea, it's about getting in the mind and the body and the spirit of that child. How comfort, feel, touch. So before anything we do, it's about how they're going to feel. So that's the philosophy of the comfort. No zippers, no buttons, no closures. Everything is stretchy, comfortable. Super cozy. Um, I also noticed on your site that you have a lot of evil eye type yes. stuff, which is so tell us a little bit about the real philosophy behind <laughs> the work you're doing. Um, let me see if I have some here. No, um, so it's about energy, positivity, um, the greater purpose, which is the universe and why we're here. So. Why are we here? <laughs> what is your, um, I'd love to hear your theory, take on it. Uh, what's my theory? Um, individual base, but to finally understand that we are all uh, one interconnected atom. Mm -hmm and everything we do connects us together, and it's not about an I, it's about a we in a simple form. Mm. That's so, so beautifully so, yeah. said. Yes. We around here like to say we're community powered, and some of the young ladies who are part of your capsule collection have actually been featured on the show, the Clements Twins. Yes. Let's take a look at a little bit of the photo shoot that's happening right there with 
two of our favorite little ladies. Oh my ladies. goodness. It's so beautiful. So just the world and the community that you're committed to creating. Yes. Really, aren't they adorable? They're the cutest, oh my gosh. Yeah. And they're so fun and sweet. Oh, yes. absolutely. Yeah. Talk a little bit on Friday of, um, you know, how so many people hate their job. It's really sad, like 53 to 85% of people hate their job. When did you, have you always loved what you did or was there ever a time when you weren't doing what you loved to do? Um, never. I was born, <laughs> uh, I, which is the shocky energy, you know, the energy of the creativity. And I was, I always knew that I was here to transfer that energy in whatever medium. So there was phases in my life where I did styling, where I did um, different playing with different elements. But I always knew that it was the. And this, at the end of the day, it's not about a product. It's about the love and energy that goes into bringing smiles into the product. Well, your, your suit is doing that for yes. sure. It's yeah. like a ray of sunshine. It's Thank so you. Yeah. You guys always. I did my research before I came. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, please tell everyone where they can find and follow and, and get some of these pieces from your new Couples Collage. Um, we, you can buy it directly at lanouche.com. You can shop us on macy's.com. Uh, at your local curated boutiques, uh, locally and internationally. You can find that list on our website, as well as Amazon and lots of other uh, platforms on the internet. Fantastic. Amazing. Thank, Thank you, you, you so, so much. much. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning, La La Land. You know, it's, uh, it's moving for me. Mm. What are you most grateful for today? I am so grateful to be here and to have the opportunity to be with all these wonderful, badass boss babes <laughs> um, and with all of you. And it's just a wonderful opportunity to share the positive messages out in the world because I think the world really needs it Amazing. right now. What we have done and thanking me for the contribution we're making to their lives. Oh, and I nice. Thought, mm. That's this great. is what my purpose is. This is why I was born. And now show to the camera. up to you to choose the winner. Is it Annie? Is it Haley? And that's why I like the show. You know, years ago I did the Dinah show, which is Dinah Shore, and it was a daytime show. And it was kind of like this. It was just like very up and it was all positive stuff. They didn't bring uh, negative stuff to, to the audience. And that's why I feel with this show. It's very relaxed. You know, it's very professional, but it's, it's quite a bit of fun. You can binge watch and binge watch. You can binge watch. And you can binge watch, binge watch, or you can binge watch. Please binge watch. You can binge watch and binge them on EverTalk TV. Thanks for coming. Bye. Mm. First TV experience. I'm so happy to do this with you. Anywhere on EverTalk TV, your home for talk. Live from Los Angeles, welcome back to Good Morning La La. Around here, we like to ask our guests how they start their mornings, and we have Kitia Sky in the house who runs Honor Mornings. Honor Mornings. And you do vegan smoothies and products and so on and so forth. We're yeah. so excited to talk to you about Thank how you. you do Honor Mornings. Thank you. I'm so excited. It's my first time being on a talk show about Honor. <laughs> a little nervous. <laughs> well, it is so important for us to honor yeah. our morning. So yeah. what is the best way you found to do that for yourself and translated that into this brand? Yeah. Um, going back to what you were discussing in the beginning of the show, I used to work in New York City and I was in an advertising agency and I was so unhappy and I was so stressed out. I didn't like myself and I was miserable. And for me, it was just on our mornings, it's once you honor yourself in the morning, it changes your entire day and it changes the way that you look at your day and you look at your life. And the way that I like to honor myself in the morning is just because I'm a little bit of a high, as a, 
excited, high energy person, for me it's all about grounding. It's about getting in your body, being present, enjoying your smoothie that gives your body loving things and just taking that moment to just center yourself. So what exactly is in this organic California <laughs> smoothie? I've never seen one quite this color. Yeah. Algae. Well, the smoothie itself, on our mornings, it's, it's a base. So it consists of 20 grams of pure plant protein, um, a full serving of greens, spirulina, and three adaptogens. Ooh, all the What's things. An yeah, so adaptogens, the ones that we use are mucuna. So that's L-dopamine boosting, it's the happy bean. So you'll notice even from like a little bit of this, it helps balance your mood and makes you, makes a healthy L-dopamine level and it makes okay. you la la. It makes yeah. you la la. <laughs> Don't mind if I do. <laughs> what are the other adaptogens? Then we have maca, which is energy and um, libido, which I hear with strawberries for men is dangerous. Oh. Oh, yeah. That's good to know. That's good to know. Yeah. yeah. Someone told me work. that. They're like, be careful. If you mix strawberries with mucuna, it's like, whoop. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> good to know. Good to know. And then we have reishi, which is um, its body uh, calming. It's almost like a very mm. subtle form of CBD, but it just helps you feel grounded and relax the body. This, this is delicious. <laughs> <laughs> very well balanced yes. with all the things. This is really good. Is there That's any really sweetener in this? No, there's no sweeteners at all because I myself don't eat any refined sugars. And um, I was getting annoyed about the fact that every grocery store, every healthy market I went to, there's always some kind of stevia. There's always something that mm -hmm. is wonderful if you choose to add, but maybe you don't want it. Mm -hmm. So what I made today, my favorite version of Honor, which I've been having every single day for six years, is just the Honor Morning packet that you rip and you put in, and then I add a little bit of uh, frozen organic blueberries, so you don't need ice. Love. And then um, a little bit of almond milk, maybe a little bit of banana, and that's it. Or whatever your heart wants. Honor your mornings. <laughs> Honor Thank your you mornings. so much. I see you brought a little yes. wow. something. Yes, I wanted to gift you. Oh, Thank you so goodness. much. <laughs> we love a good present. Yay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Please tell everyone where they can find and follow you and Honor Their Mornings. Oh, yeah, you can find us on honormornings.com. Uh, packaging. Yeah, mm -hmm. they're so amazing beautiful. for travel. So you can just rip them, throw them in your bag. In case there's an earthquake. Yeah, yeah, no, exactly. yeah that bag you, right you'll there. You'll have your dopamine, your libido, <laughs> your energy. <laughs> oh, that's right. Be fully that's entertain, nice. entertained. That's exactly. right. Exactly. <laughs> oh, thank you so thank much. Thank you so much. We you. Stay tuned. back tomorrow. Good morning, Thank Lala. you. How we do it. Watch the stories of people changing the world? Ever Talk TV, the Netflix of talk. I'm Jez Moyer, the co founder and host of Ever Talk TV, and I am thrilled to introduce you to America's first live video streaming talk show network. We all crave connection. I, I'm a big fan of videoing a podcast. The impact that I'm having people on a podcast wow. is I'm having more impact on, on those people than I ever did in news. We want to be heard, but we also need to listen. Podcasts, I understand they are red hot. It's actually remarkable how scary to me podcasting is. Everybody should have a podcast. I really wondered why. I mean, we've been doing this for 12 years. Nobody has done this uh, right. in other arenas. We have to change the conversation to happiness over financial success. It was like, we have to. We have to. Honestly, it was meeting new people who had already heard about what we've done and thanking me for the contribution we're making to their lives. Oh, nice. Mm. That's this great. is what my purpose is. This is why I was born. Yeah. I think this is my first time my book's been up on TV. This is awesome. <laughs> you can binge watch and binge watch. You can binge watch. And you can binge watch. Binge watch or you can binge watch. Please binge watch. You can binge watch and binge them on EverTalk TV. Thanks for coming. Bye.
entertainment that will inspire, uplift, and empower you anytime, anywhere on EverTalk TV, your home for talk. Live from Los Angeles, welcome back to Good Morning Law. And I'm hashtag Friday Feels. We love a good date night. Where better to go than Studio Movie Grill? We've got Chef Thad Kelly with us. Thanks so much for being here, Chef. Oh, thanks for having me. One of my favorite things about Studio Movie Grill is not only do we get a great movie, but we also get a great meal. Fan favorite, all Americana. Tell us a little bit about the menu. Well, um, you know, you're watching a movie, so you're one, you're in the dark, and two, you're with somebody else. And, and so we tried to make it easy for everybody, but instead of the traditional concession stand food, we really wanted to bring a full meal that people can enjoy and get a great value uh, no matter what the movie is. And so some, some of these are our heavier entree salads uh, that we have uh, different proteins as, such as steak, tuna, salmon, and chicken, but we do have some lighter food. Uh, that way it's a little bit, uh, it's all very easy to eat inside the theater. Well, before we taste, let's take a look at the Studio Movie Grill experience. So you yeah. go see a movie mm -hmm. and you eat and drink. Mm -hmm. Loaded cheese fries. Personal favorite of mine, too. Yep. We're going to one of those cool movie theaters that have a bar. It's like yeah. a restaurant, but a restaurant that caters to movies. Miss, that sounds really and good. And it sounds really good. Yeah, can we get some coconut chicken tenders? <laughs> Oh my gosh, we get so, um, this is, you're gonna spoil us. I'm never gonna wanna go to another theater. <laughs> I know. So There's no other way to do it. I don't know if you can see on the camera exactly, but these are, like, I couldn't even oh, think of better know. meals. I mean, this is right exactly what I would want for dinner, which is <clears throat> a ton of veggies with some salmon, some tuna with more veggies. I mean, just like, this is perfect yeah. deal. Tell us a little bit about each dish and the wine we're going to <laughs> pair it with. Well, um, what we like to call it, uh, this is more superfood. Uh, it's a lot of different greens, and we have fresh vegetables, edamame, mangoes, a lot of different fruits. We have some uh, couscous, tabbouleh, uh, we have some fresh feta cheese, mm -hmm. and then we make everything from scratch every day inside uh, our theater. We got a great team members back there. And so uh, these are actually the products and what they'll look like when you come and, uh, and, and oh. come and see a movie with us. So beautiful. Aaron, would you mind passing the forks? I'm dying mm -hmm. to taste yeah. the tuna. It's like brunch has been served on Good Morning La La Land. <laughs> really and we've even got a little Betty's blend. Now, is this one of the whites that's actually on your menu? Yes, it's it is. Fine. It's actually, uh, uh, it was developed specifically for us. Mm -hmm. And our uh, CEO and owner, Brian Schultz, it was actually named after his wife, <laughs> Betty. Oh, wow, his wife, Betty. <laughs> because she enjoys it as well. I've never met a Betty I didn't like. Jess? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a little bit of tuna. This is incredible. So, Chef, how long have you been working with Studio Movie Grill? Uh, we're coming up on year 20. It started mm. uh, in Dallas, Texas. Mm. And uh, so um, good. we've uh, got 44 locations across the country uh, oh, and seven really in California. Wow. Mm. That's amazing. Do you have a favorite dinner in a movie? Uh, well, if you're gonna uh, go. What are you gonna see and what are you gonna order, Chef? Well, you know the Glendale location is really, I think, one of our more sharper uh, studio movie grills that we have. Mm. It's in a great area of town. It's easy to walk out, and I really like how it's laid out. So when I go to see a movie, uh, I like action adventure. I'm sorry to say, but uh, <laughs> also some like something light, specifically like the steak salad myself. Mm. And we love that Studio Movie Grill is now in Glendale. Brought over 200 jobs locally to Southern California, which is incredible. And it's a very cool area, the Arts and Entertainment District of Glendale. It's really exciting. Mm -hmm. And we're excited to share it with you. We're actually doing a giveaway on our Instagram. Mm. So be sure to like and follow Good Morning Lala and tell us your favorite dinner and a movie in the comments. And we are giving five lucky winners a pair of tickets and a $10 food and beverage voucher. Wow, nice. So and we're not going to sell them. Right? We're not going to take them. We're not <laughs> Thank gonna take you them. so much, Chef, for sharing with us. We're so really grateful. Great. Thank you so Thank you. much. Oh, no problem.
We are Good Morning Lawland, America's first live streaming daily talk show coming to you live Monday through Friday at 9 a.m. All of today's interviews are available as a podcast on iTunes and the whole show is streaming on Evertalk TV on Apple TV and Roku. That's right. We're waking up the world. You guys have a great Friday. May you love your life. Have it's going to be a good morning, La La Land. <laughs>